So welcome everyone. My name is Ashley Weinheimer. I'm one of the librarians on our customer success team here at McGraw-Hill. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to join me today for this webinar where we will be doing a deep dive into the interactive tools that are available on Access Engineering. So just a few quick housekeeping things before we get started. The call is being recorded, so everyone who registered will receive a link to that recording after the presentation. And all of your attendee lines have been muted, but if you do have any questions, you can enter those into the Q&A box or the chat box. You should have both of those options available at the bottom of your screen. And I'll be sure to save time at the end to answer your questions, um, any questions that you have. So feel free to put those in throughout the presentation as I'm showing the site, um, and I'll get to those at the end. So let me go over now to my shared screen which you should see the Access Engineering homepage. So first, let me just explain what is Access Engineering before we dive in. So Access Engineering is an engineering reference and teaching platform that delivers interdisciplinary content integrated with analytical teaching and learning tools. Today, we are just going to focus on some of those interactive tools, so not on the book content. We do have a lot of book content on the site, lots of enhanced features to make using those books even easier and more productive. And if you're interested in hearing more about book content, there was a second part of this webinar series focusing specifically on that that ran last month. So there is a recording available of that if you're interested. So access to the site is provided through institutional subscriptions. So if your library subscribes to Access Engineering, then all of your faculty and students will have access to all of the content on the site here. And at the top of the homepage in the top right corner here, if your institution has a subscription, you should see this message that says access via your institution. And that's just a really quick way to check to make sure you've been properly authenticated on the site and that you'll have access to everything. So a good way to make sure you're authenticated is to go through your library's main page find their list of databases and link to Access Engineering from that list. So this might prompt you to log in with institutional credentials, connect to VPN, and then should take you right through onto the site. And we also do have a remote access option available for some authentication methods. So that's not available for all institutions, but um, through certain connection points. And this remote access is based on a browser cookie so there is some more information on this page um, about how that works. So you can get more information there. And that again is linked from this remote access link in the site header. And if anyone does have questions on authentication, if you're not sure if your institution subscribes, you can always reach out to the customer success team and we're happy to check on that and give you details. Um, so you can reach out. I'll make sure everyone has that email after the webinar or if you wanna put it in the chat and I can follow up with you as well. So let me go back again to the homepage. And here on the homepage, we see all of the different content types that are available on the site and can start diving in and finding relevant content. So here very prominently featured in the middle is a book rotator, just highlighting some of our top titles on the site and allowing you to really easily jump into some of those books. Um, and you can also view lists of books by the different categories here under the rotator. But again, the focus in this particular webinar is on some of the additional features beyond books on the site. So I'm actually going to scroll past that rotator down to the bottom of the page here. And here I have some more information on the interactive tools that are available and links to browse through lists of all of these different content types as well. So this is a good way to see all available data viz projects or spreadsheet calculators and you can even get lists of the graphs and tables that live within books. So you can filter down to just that content as well. And all of these same blue buttons that are down here are also available up here above the book rotator. So you don't have to scroll all the way down the page. That just gives you some more information. So if you have a particular content type in mind, that can be a great way to browse through what's available in that content type. And you can also just do a search on the site and see what's available across all of the content types. So we do have the general search bar here in the middle of the home page, and that will also appear at the top of any internal page within the site. So the search functions much as you would expect. 
oops, I'm going to start typing in here. And you can see Type Ahead is offering some suggestions. So I'll go ahead and pick temperature coefficients and run that search. And then I'll get my results screen there so I can scroll through everything on the site that deals with temperature coefficients um, and find what I need that way. So that's the search. Again, very easy, um, very intuitive. And then there are also three different browse options. So under the search on the home page, there were those three blue buttons. And then from any internal page, you can see my search bar here at the top again. And I can expand this browse menu and get back to those options as well as the content lists again. So these three blue buttons are our three site taxonomies, which we developed with the help of 15 subject matter experts from across all engineering disciplines. So I'll start with browse by industry. This is the most basic option. It just has a list of 11 different industries to choose from. And within each industry, it's very interdisciplinary. So if you're in aerospace and defense, for instance, I'll just bring that up quickly. You'll find content in those results from materials engineering, mechanical engineering, um, aircraft titles here. So you can see pulling things from all different disciplines combined into one place for you to be able to browse through them quickly. The next option is our browse by course. This is specifically designed to help faculty map our content to the curriculum of some common engineering courses. And you can see this one is a little bit more complex. These arrows here, there's a few different levels available in this taxonomy. And the taxonomy here is organized to follow the outline of a typical syllabus. So these different topics, as I'm opening some up here, you'll see they're arranged sort of in the order in which you teach or learn about these topics in a course. So that's how that one is organized. And these outlines in this taxonomy were also created by subject matter experts, by faculty who teach these courses, and they help determine what content should be tagged to the specific terms as well. And then the last browse option is our browse by subject, which you can see this one is organized starting from the major engineering disciplines. And then I'll just open some of these up so you can see um, these then just have the terms um, and subtopics arranged alphabetically from there. And the taxonomies are all also set up to be polyhierarchical, so terms will be found in multiple places within the taxonomy if they apply to multiple disciplines or subjects, which of course many of the terms do, so you don't have to worry about being in the right place. You can still um, find relevant terms here. So we'll do a browse example. I'm going to go into mechanical engineering. Let's scroll through down to solid mechanics, and I'm just going to pick loads for my browse here. So before I hit browse, I just want to point out you can select multiple terms here using the checkboxes. You can select terms from different levels, different disciplines to really customize the results that you're going to see. And you can also search through any of these taxonomy boxes. Oops, so I'm going to type in load here, and then I can see um, my term highlighted in red and sort of also where that falls in the taxonomy scheme as well. So let me just go ahead, though, and just browse with just the selected term of loads and see those results. And while we're waiting for that to load, here we go. I just want to point out the results screens, whether you're looking at a list by content type, you're doing a search, you're using the browse feature like we just did here. All of the results screens are consistent across the site, so they all will have the same layout and the same options to interact with this and narrow things down. If we want to find some videos, spreadsheets, or some of that other content I've been mentioning, you'll see across the top of my results list are content tabs, pulling out all of that um, additional content by content type. So here you can see I have a lot of book content, but I also have 26 videos on loads, two spreadsheets, and one data viz project. So that can be a way to quickly run a search or browse, and then you can very easily see what type of content is available. And then here at the top, I can add more search terms. This is defaulted to searching within my applied filters. So I can search that, or I can always toggle that back to all of Access Engineering and just start a fresh search from here. Then there are some filters available on the left to narrow things down a little bit further. So here I have 5,000 results. That's still a lot to look through. Um, maybe I want to narrow that down a little bit more. So a few of these filters specifically relate to book content. So we have 
um, book type, book title, and author are sort of focused on the book content. And then there's also a book component filter. And this lets you find specific graphs, solution walkthroughs, figures, tables, example problems within book content. <clears throat> so even within the books, we're separating out all of that additional content to make it really easy for you to find. Then some other filters we have available here, you can add more terms from any of those three taxonomies I mentioned. So you can see those are all available here. You can even filter to just specific equations. So you can really quickly see if we have um, any videos or spreadsheets that use a particular named engineering equation from this list. Um, as I'm scrolling through this list, you can see a lot of them are grayed out because there's no results. I've already filtered it down to just loads, so not every equation will apply. But then for the equations that do have results, I'll see a number in parentheses next to the term that gives you the number of items you'll see if you apply that particular filter. And again, you can always search through any of these filter boxes as well. So if you have a particular equation in mind, um, you can find it that way as well. So let me close out of that filter. And let's go now to the videos tab that I mentioned and start getting into some examples of the actual content and what this looks like. So here are my 26 videos. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and pick one from one of our Shams titles. <clears throat> So here you can see um, the title of the video and then the title of the book that this video is from as well. So every content type on the site has a consistent landing page as well that you see here. So again, all the same options, no matter what content type you're in. So let me point out first, there are a few content tools here at the top. I can generate a citation for this content. That also gives me the RIS file that I can download and use in a citation management tool. I can share a direct link to this video. If I click that option, there's just the direct link here. And there will also be a proxy link option if your institution uses a proxy server for access and has that set up. So that just adds your proxy prefix to the link so that remote users can use that and log in and watch the video and they won't be getting you know, an error that they don't have access. Um, so that's a nice option there. You can also add a bookmark or a label, and that saves this video to your personal account. I'll show you how to sign up for the personal account a little bit later and some other features that that unlocks. Um, but it does allow you to save specific items so you can create lists for yourself and go back and view things again. And there is also an annotation feature here, and that uses the Hypothesis Annotation plugin. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that right now, just mentioning that it's there. I do cover that tool more thoroughly in the books webinar that I mentioned. It makes a little bit more sense with the books content, but it is available on every page within the site. And then another feature of every content page here, we'll always see this related searches box on the side. <clears throat> and this just lets you easily click on any of these terms. You can see these are all linked and that will run a search and we can see what else is available on the site for a particular topic um, that's covered in this video. And then here in the middle, I can just play this video. And if I scroll down below that, there is a link to view this video in context, which will take me back into um, the section of this book where the video appears and view the video in context within the chapter so you can see the surrounding text. So the videos do stand on their own, as we can see here, but they're also linked to particular book sections or example problems. So just making that connection so you can bounce back and forth between the different content types on the site. The videos were created by faculty members and they walk you step by step through different worked example problems. So this video, I'm just going to hit play here, is part of a new set that we just added from Jeff Hansen, who is very popular on YouTube for his statics and dynamics videos. So I'm going to jump ahead, show you a little bit of what this video looks like. You can see he's actually drawing out the problem on a whiteboard, walking you through all the steps to find the answer, all the rationale for solving this particular problem. And most of our videos are these problem solving type of videos, although most of them are more screen capture type than this lecture style where you actually see the faculty member. Um, and we do also have a few videos that are showing walkthroughs of different software, showing operation of machinery and equipment, 
So I do have two quick examples of those. Let me show, here's one showing how to solve a problem in MATLAB. Oops, that was the wrong one. Here's one showing how to oops, solve a problem in MATLAB. So let me refresh that. So you'll see it, it takes you into the actual software and shows you sort of what you need to do there. So, oops. So there you go. So that's um, one of the types of videos. And then here is one showing um, drilling and blasting equipment from our construction planning title. So that one's, again, showing you actual equipment in the field. And you can also see, as I'm showing these different videos, that closed captioning is available on all of our videos. And we do also provide a full transcript for all videos as well. OK, so let me close out of those. Go back to my search here. <clears throat> and let's look at a spreadsheet as the next content type. And this time, um, so I found this video from running a search just on a topic, going to the videos tab, just to show again another way of getting to content. I'm just going to expand this browse menu and use the spreadsheet button to get to the list of all spreadsheets on the site. And then from here again, I could add search terms. I can um, narrow this down. So I'll just narrow down to just chemical engineering. Um, to find what spreadsheets are available in that discipline. So here I can scroll through the spreadsheets, get a little description, the titles, and I'm just going to click on um, the first one here on um, heat exchangers. So here again, that takes us to this same layout of content landing page. We have um, information on the author at the top here. We have all of those content tools I pointed out, as well as the related searches on the side. And then in the middle here is the option to download this spreadsheet in Excel. And for most of them, you will have an option of your unit system there as well. So you could switch between metric and imperial here. Below that, there is also an option to um, sign up for a spreadsheet alert. That's another feature that's tied to the personal account I mentioned. So you could click that and then get an email alert if the spreadsheet is updated. So you could come back and download the new version. That doesn't happen too often, but if one of the underlying books that's linked to the spreadsheet here um, has a new addition or an update, there will occasionally be updates to the spreadsheet as well. And since the spreadsheet does download as an Excel file and you can use it offline, you wouldn't necessarily know that it was updated without that particular alert. So let me go ahead and I have that spreadsheet down here so we can see what these look like. So first on the first tab here, there's just a table of contents explaining what is on the various tabs in the spreadsheet. So some will be different variations of a calculation or walking you step-by-step step through a longer calculation like we have in this spreadsheet here. So if I go into a calculation sheet, you'll see places in yellow where you can change different input variables and then you can see calculations going on here. And then in the orange cells are your results. And we've really tried to create these spreadsheets to be very transparent and not just a black box that's spitting out a number. You can click on any of these results cells and actually see um, the Excel formulas going on behind the scenes. They are locked, so you can't accidentally change something um, and mess up the spreadsheet, but you can see what's happening there. And this one as well, you can see is pretty explanatory throughout, giving lots of directions on what you should be doing and inputting here. And then over on the right of each sheet, there is this orange box with um, discussion, references, information on the equations being used here, and links back to content and access engineering for additional information on anything being done in this spreadsheet. OK, so that is the spreadsheet. Let me go back over to the site here. A fairly new content type on the site are our case studies. These just got added last summer. Our initial set of case studies, if I'm just going to bring up the list of all of them here. Um, this initial set focuses on biomedical engineering, and that's just where we had the greatest demand from faculty who are looking for these types of resources to supplement core engineering text from other disciplines with BME-specific applications. And these case studies were also created by faculty members with industry experience as well. And we do have them go through a peer review process by experts in the area. So I'm going to scroll back up and open up one of the newer ones here. 
And again, you'll see same content landing page information on the authors here at the top. There will always be this little information button where you can get um, more information on their credentials um, or affiliations there. So then we have, again, the content tools. On this one, we also have the option added here to download a PDF copy of this case study. So if you needed to share this with students or have them use it offline, you can do so with that. The case studies are designed around active learning methods where they present a real world scenario and then guide students through various technical, design, economic, ethical considerations for that case. So here's our introduction. Each case is framed by ABET learning objectives. So those are clearly defined here at the top. And then we have some details on the scenario, all of the background information on all the different aspects we're considering in this case. And then if I scroll all the way through all of that, oops, to the bottom here, we have the questions for the case study. So the questions you can see are divided up into different focus areas, and that's just so instructors can really easily select just what they need, depending on how they want to use this particular case study. So if you're just focusing on clinical aspects, there's some questions there. Um, there's some business questions for this one, some engineering questions as well. So those categories will change depending on what the case is, but just allow you to um, pick and choose sort of what questions you need. If I go up to the top here, you can see here's our case study, and there is also a resources tab. And this provides an instructor guide, solutions, as well as an editable um, Word document version. So in case you wanted to edit anything or have your students fill things out and turn it into you, um, that's available as well from this tab. And this is the first content type that we've seen so far with the instructor resources on this resources tab. So let me just explain this a little bit further. So some of our textbook titles on the site, as well as our case studies and data viz projects will have available instructor resources that you can access right from Access Engineering. So some of these resources will be just openly available to everyone. Those are typically project files, data sets, supplemental readings, anything that can be openly available to students without causing any concern. So those would just be blue links here that anyone could download. And then you can also see some of our resources here are protected resources, like the resources here, the solutions manuals or PowerPoint slides or um, anything that you know you don't want students having access to. And then below that, you can see there is also the process if you are an instructor for requesting access to these resources so that you can download and use them. So the very first step here is signing up for a personal account that I mentioned. So you can either use the link to log in if you have an account already, or there is also a link to register. I'll just click that to show you what this looks like. That will just take you to this page here that um, asks you to enter your name, your email address, and create a password to create your account. And then again, that personal account, once you've created it, does have some other features available, but it's also just um, the first step in getting to these instructor resources. So let me go back and I'll just log into my account quickly here so we can see what the next step is. So go back to that resources tab. I'm gonna select the login option which will take me here so I can enter my username and password. <laughs> so once I've logged in, we'll see that first step that told you you needed a personal account will now be checked off on that tab. So let that load here. So there we go, the first step's checked off. And now I have access to this request instructor rights link. So that just gives you this request form that just asks for a few additional pieces of information, making sure we get your institutional email address if you didn't use that already for your personal account. And then when you submit this form, that goes to the customer success team. And once we've verified that you are in fact an instructor, we'll grant those rights to your account. And the nice thing there is that that is turned on site-wide. So, so long as you are logged in to your personal account, you'll be able to view all instructor resources on the site for any title, for any case study. You don't have to keep coming back to this and filling this form out and requesting them for additional resources. So it's just turned on site-wide. 
Um, so I highly recommend if you are an instructor and you're interested, think you might be interested, just go ahead and fill that out and then you'll have access to everything. And again, if you have any issues with that form with getting those instructor rights turned on, please reach out to the customer success team and we're happy to help um, get you set up there. Okay, so next let's look at the DataViz projects. This is another active learning resource on the site. So again, just using the content button up here to open up the list of available projects. And just a reminder, I'm sort of using these content buttons to go through the different examples here, but all of these content types will show up in search and browse results, and you can get to them using those content tabs that I pointed out um, in our browse results. So here are my database projects. I'm actually going to go to the second page for my example here. There's a nice project there on travel mug design. So I'll click on that. Again, takes us to the same content landing page that we see here, information on the author, all of those tools on the side. And then from here in the middle, we can link over to access the project in DataViz, or we can download the project as a document that again, you could edit and share with students, have them fill out um, anything that you needed there. And there are also, as I mentioned, the instructor resources available for these as well. So there you have the answers to the questions for this particular project. And back on this tab, we have a little um, description. And then down here, you'll see that this particular project is actually part of a series that accompanies our materials and manufacturing textbook. So you can link over to see that textbook or see the full list of all of the projects in that series here as well. So that's really designed, you know, if you're using that textbook or a similar um, textbook, you sort of have a ready-made list of projects that you can share with students or adapt. But I'm going to go ahead and open up this project. That will take me into DataViz, and then my project will load on the screen here. Let me close out of that message. So here we can see sort of how this project's laid out. Here I have the project title. I have three different pages in this project, and each page has different information and visualizations on each. Up here at the top, in the top right, you can also save this project, again, if you have a personal account. So you can make edits, you can adapt this project however you want, and then save a copy. You can also just share a direct link to the project. Maybe you like it exactly as it is, you don't want to make any edits, um, you can get that direct link. And you can also export this as a PDF for viewing offline, which will download the visualizations as well, or you can just start your own new blank project from here too. So here on this first page on thermal insulation, at the top there is a description, some background, some questions that you want students to consider as they're exploring the visualizations on this page. And then we have um, the visualization itself and some tabular data for the property we're exploring here. So this first page, our visualization is just a basic dot plot showing one property, thermal conductivity here, and then across the material classes. If I go to the second page, there is another type of visualization, which is a scatter plot comparing two different properties. So here I'm comparing fracture toughness and density again across all the material classes represented by the colors here. You can interact with this visualization. So here I can click on a dot, say I want to see what is this particular material that's out so far. Um, I can get more details, see all of the information and properties for that particular material. I can also select and deselect materials. So I have those options there. Let's select, I can deselect. I don't want to include those ones. Um, I can zoom in or out, so everything's kind of clustered down there. I can sort of move this around and zoom in and change the view here um, with those options. And then I can always reset it if I've zoomed in too far there. Oops, reset. Um, at the bottom, I have some options down here. I can see both of my properties that I'm looking at, and I can set different minimum and maximum values, and I can see things falling out of range as I move those different parameters around. And then below the visualization is this table that I mentioned. This has all of the properties that are being shown in the graphs on this page. And as I was adjusting different things on the graphs above, you can see things have fallen out of range. That's represented in the table. Um, in real time. 
In this table, I can also sort by any of the columns. I can star or select and deselect um, items from here. And I'll scroll up for a second so you can see as I'm starring things, those stars are appearing on my graph. And then the last thing I can do with this table is I can also export all of this data as a CSV file if you wanted to interact with this data elsewhere. You can also interact um, with the data on this page using the Select Materials menu over here on the left. So here I can search for a specific material in here. I can work my way through the different material classes and select materials to include or not include in my visualizations. So say for this project, I don't really want to make my travel mug out of anything else. I just want to use metals. So let me unselect all of those other options. I can um, do that. And then the choices for display setting down here, I can show selected and in range only, or I can even star very specific items and just show things that I've starred. So you have some different options for the display for what you want students to see and focus in on there. And then just um, below that is a related content area on each page. And you can use this to add links to content in Access Engineering or to external content as well. It just asks you for um, the heading and a URL. So anything that you wanted to share with students here, um, you can add those links. So you can see you can really create a very self-contained experience here for students. It's all web-based. It's all very responsive, very user-friendly very easy for students to come in, play around, supplement some of the concepts that they're learning about in a very visual and interactive way. So that is the DataViz projects. I'm just gonna click on, oops, and I won't save, click on DataViz here to go back to the main page. So you'll see the projects are listed here as well. Um, so again, those are just sort of pre-created for you to be able to easily drop into your class and use, but you can also, um, create your own project as well, or if you just want a single visualization and not the whole project, um, you can do that here. So if I click the compare properties across materials option, I can see um, I have the options of the one property dot plot, the two property scatter plot, and I can also just get tabular data that will give me up to 20 properties, but no visualization. So I'll just click on one property so we can see the different properties that are available here. Um, so you can again search or just expand any of these and work your way through here. So I'm just going to click on something um, so you can see again, same layout that we saw in the example project. I can add more visualizations to this page. I can add more pages um, and I can add a title for my pages or my project. So those are sort of the options if you want to start fresh and, or again, you can use an existing project and edit it if you want as well. Okay, and let me go back again to DataViz, won't save this again. And the other option here on the home page is to find a property value for a single material. So I'm going to open that up. This brings up just a very simple form where we can type in our material. And you can see type ahead is offering me suggestions of what's in the database, same for the property. And once I've selected my material and my property, the value appears there. The source is listed as well, and you can also see these units are a drop down menu, so you can very easily change your units and get that value in whatever form you need um, it to be in there. And then also from this page, so this is just a very easy um, property lookup tool, but you can always get right back to the visualizations and create a new project by just using this blue button, which will give you the dot plot comparing fracture toughness across all materials. So that's sort of the other option that's available on DataViz. Let me go back over to the main Access Engineering site. And brand new on the site, we just added a series of solution walkthroughs. So these are under other here. I'm gonna open up solution walkthroughs so we can, again, browse through the list of all of them. These are available for three titles so far. So I'm gonna open up the book title filter just to show you those three titles. So three of our top textbook titles, um, Davis's Water and Wastewater Engineering, the Automatic Control Systems title, and Introduction to Finite Element Method are the um, titles available here. 
the X out of that. I'm just going to click on one of these from the automatic control systems title just so we can see what this looks like. So if I click that result, it's actually taking me into the book and it will zoom me right down to where this appears in the text. So you can see now we're in the chapter, um, we're in the book, we can read through the rest of the chapter, or we can launch this solution right from here. So that will open up a new window where I can see and interact with this solution walkthrough. And these are designed to give students extra scaffolded help with problems by walking them through how to set up and solve end of chapter problems. So it's a little bit similar to what our videos do, like walking step by step through an example problem. But we had some feedback from students that they wanted something that was a little bit more interactive than a video and where they could easily get help on just a specific part of a problem and not necessarily have to watch the whole video. So here's our problem introduction. Um, here on the first tab, we're setting the problem up. There's the objective, the game plan, and some tips here. So sometimes students just need help getting started and then they're good from there. Um, and then there's also, you know, walking them through each of the steps if they do need some additional help. Each of these steps has a, um, some information on what you're going to do in this step and then a show me section. So these are all hidden to start sort of with the idea that students can try that piece on their own and then check their work with the show me part. So that goes through all the steps in the problem. And then the last tab is a wrap up section which gives just some additional tips for students as well as linked related problems and references here. And here again, we found students often understand the example problems, what the professor shows in class, but then they have trouble using that knowledge when they're tackling a new problem that isn't something that they've seen before. So this wrap up tab is really intended to help students make those connections and realize that they do know how to set up and solve these problems, even though they may appear different or have a twist in them that they haven't encountered yet. So that's sort of the idea of the solution walkthroughs. Um, and again, brand new on the site and they're available for those three titles that I mentioned. Um, and you can always get to them. Oops, let me go back from that solutions walkthrough tab. And there are currently about um, 25 to 30 of these walkthroughs for each of those three titles. And there are more for some other titles in the works that um, are coming out later in the year as well. Okay, so I mentioned the personal account a few times, so let me just briefly show that in a little bit more detail. So the personal account is a completely optional feature. It's not necessary to have a personal account to view content on the site. And a personal account does not replace the need to authenticate through your institution's subscription. So you can't just log into your personal account and have access. You'll still need to log in through your institution. What the personal account does is it just unlocks a few additional features, including allowing you to request those instructor resources that I mentioned, as well as to save specific content um, on the site and also to create and save those data viz projects. So let me go up here and log out for a second just so I can show this process again. I showed you before how to log out from, or how to, sorry, log in from the instructor resources tab but from any page on the site, in the site header, there will be a yellow My Account button um, that is available if you're interested in creating or logging into that account. So if I click on that here now that I'm logged out, that will bring up this window that I see here. It's telling me I have access via my institution subscription. And then below that, there will be an option to log in via email username. So here again, if I have my account, I can log in or there is that link to register and create my new account from here. So let me log back in. And then once I'm logged in, it will take me back over to the site and we'll see that yellow My Account button actually becomes a drop down menu that lets me view different content that I've saved to my account. So I'll open that up. Oops. There we go. So I'm just going to jump into bookmarks here. So again, I can save specific content to my account. Um, to view again, and you can see you can save that on book content, so you can save chapters, you can um, save spreadsheets, videos, anything that you want, any content type can be saved with a bookmark. You can also save searches, so you have the option to um, run that search again if you maybe didn't get through all the results the first time. You can also set up an email alert 
you can see that option on the side here. So if you want an alert, if anything new is added to the site that matches your search term, that can be a helpful feature as well. And you can also create labels. This just is sort of a tag that allows you to create lists of different content by tagging them with these labels. So for a particular course or project that you're working on, um, however you'd like to organize your resources just to be able to sort through them a little bit more easily. Um, and then your data viz project and annotations are also linked here as well. <clears throat> and then I also want to point out the what's new link in the site header. So this has content updates on the site. If I scroll through here, there are those new solution walkthroughs that I mentioned. Um, you can see we add several new titles every month, as well as the other content types. So case study spreadsheets here, are those Jeff Hansen video series that I mentioned, the data viz project series, um, you can get to all of that from this what's new page. And then down here at the bottom as well, so you can always come to this page, but then if you have that personal account and you're interested in just getting an email alert whenever new titles are added to the site, there is just a general new content alert that you can sign up for here at the bottom. And then one last thing I want to show on the site before I open it up for questions are just some of the resources available in this administration section. So for any librarians on the call, in this section you can find information on how to get usage statistics and account information for your institution's subscription. You can download MARC records and content lists. Oops. Sorry, that page, let me open this up here. You can download um, MARC records and content lists for all content types on the site. So here you can see um, all of the different content types that I've shown, so not just books, everything else. Um, and the content list too, available at the bottom, just a spreadsheet download of all the titles. And there are also promotional materials in here. So flyers, brochures for promoting the site to your users. We also have an access engineering search widget that you can embed on LibGuides or other sites. Um, then those couple of first ones were mostly for librarians, but these last two are just for everyone. So the user manuals and tutorials, um, these can be a useful reference for how to perform a specific action on the site if you need a refresher. So there's the guides here, the little brief video tutorials. Um, there is a guide and a video specifically on data viz. So if you're interested in that tool, um, that those can be useful. There is also an access engineering libguide. This has useful information which you can reference. If your library has libguides, you can copy and reuse anything from here in your own guides. And I wanna point out there is a page just on data viz with some more information as well as a page specifically on all the interactive tools that I've been mentioning today. Um, so you can go back if you need a refresher on anything um, and see that information from here. Then let me go back over to my admin page. The last tab here has information about upcoming webinars as well as recordings of some of our previous faculty-led webinars where faculty members are talking about um, how they're using some of our resources on the site in their courses and the recordings for um, these two up here at the top are going to be going up very soon, so look out for those. And also on this page, I'm going to scroll down, is the contact information for customer success, and I'll put this in the chat as well. So if you're interested in setting up a custom training, if you have any questions about using the site, promoting the site to your users, if you're a faculty member and you need help finding specific content for a course or topic, we're always happy to help, so always feel free to reach out. I'll wrap up by just thanking everyone for attending the webinar today. I hope you enjoy exploring access engineering. And again, please don't hesitate to reach out if you do have any questions or requests. So thank you all for joining me today and I hope you have a great rest of your day.